I've obviously voiced my opinion from day one of how much I love Coach, love playing for him, what I felt like he did for our, our team and our organization. We were huge fans of Mark, the players. He was ultimate players coach. He was like one of my favorite coaches of all time. Mark A. Jackson, born April 1st, 1965. Why the NBA hates Coach Mark Jackson. There's two things we know for certain about Mark Jackson at least. He's a people person and he knows basketball. We know this because all his life he's chosen to surround himself with multiple personalities all around him as first a basketball player and being an ordained minister leading his own church. There's no question his basketball IQ and knowledge far surpasses most involved in the sport on earth as you'd have to be a smart player that understands offenses and defenses like the back of your hand to be top 5 all time in assists in NBA history before recently being passed by Chris Paul and LeBron James currently sitting at 6th all time. He took a bottom feeding Warriors franchise to the brink of soon winning a championship improving them every year from 23 wins to 47 wins to a 51 win team before he was fired. Then to display that as one of the best broadcasters in basketball currently shows on three levels Mark Jackson dominated his role in the sport of basketball whose resume shouldn't be questioned, whose absence from coaching ever since what he turned the Warriors into is astounding and plain sad he hasn't gotten a second opportunity. I can name four coaches since Phil Jackson that have coached the most coveted coaching job in NBA history, the Lakers, that has a worse winning percentage than Mark Jackson and there's only been seven. You can't tell me Charlotte couldn't use Mark Jackson over the years. Whoever Luke Walton coached or coaches for, yes, still employed, JB Bickerstaff can't hold a sharpie for Mark Jackson. Mark who? Steven Silas and the list goes on and on of coaches with much more inferior resumes that have either gotten or still has head coaching opportunities over a coach like Mark Jackson. The thing is, I feel like everyone knows why. It's like the token elephant in the conversation of Mark Jackson's coaching career. There's been narratives floating around for years as to why he hasn't been able to secure a second coaching opportunity and a few things about those narratives, they're consistent and they all lead to some truth more than likely that Mark was guilty of the things they said he was. That said, none of that should matter in the win-loss columns, but with humans and feelings and emotions involved, not to mention power and alliances, it matters a great deal in Mark Jackson's case. For the reasons I'll attempt to explain from my perspective, Mark Jackson ultimately rubbed people the wrong way in his style of winning and because of it, he's been gold balled from the league as a coach after being one of the more promising in recent years. Three reasons Mark Jackson's coaching career was stunted. Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Mark Jackson got his start in coaching after years working as a broadcaster since retiring from basketball for ESPN, ABC, and the Yes Network. With his basketball knowledge and charisma on full display at these places nationally, the Warriors, when looking for a new coach in 2011, decided to make him owners Joe Lacob and Peter Goober's first ever coaching hire as owners of the Warriors and they seem excited and reassured the three-year contract would be a success and it was. Mark Jackson took over a team that shockingly had only two winning seasons from 1994 to 2011 and has only went to one single playoff appearance the entire 2000s and missed once again the year before Mark Jackson got there. With a 23 and 43 record they missed in his first year as well, but made a quick turnaround his second year, winning 47 games and making the conference semifinals, losing 4-2 to the Spurs. They won at least 51 games the next season for the first time since 91-92, made the playoffs in back-to-back -back seasons, losing a hard-fought seven-game first-round series to the Clippers before Mark Jackson was fired in 2014 and replaced by Steve Kerr. Stunt number one, a personality misfit.
One of the main reasons Mark Jackson never got another job as a coach was because of the narrative that was created after being fired by the Warriors. A narrative given legs, arms, and a head when Warriors owner Joe Lacob openly criticized already fired Mark Jackson for his inability to get along with owners and staff during his time there, saying basically that no one liked Mark. Quoted after letting Jackson go, saying you can't have 200 people in an organization not like you. I'm guessing they as owners in their three years together learned they didn't like Mark Jackson either? But what could have changed in those short years where winning and improvement were taking place? That's where Mark's personality misfit comes in. Jackson, with his point guard background, a legendary one that grew from the streets of New York City playground basketball, to an All-American college career on both ends of the floor, to a first-round pick and leader of his hometown team, and a top 10 all-time assist-leading career, Jackson had to be a strong personality to succeed. With that resume, it's required. But that same strong personality can either feel hot or cold to people you come in contact with, especially the people you work with. There's no warm or in-between. I see the same with Coach Prime Deion Saunders. He's the toast of the town in college football at the moment because he's in an environment where that strong personality can work on amateurs because as their coach, you are the gatekeeper to their future success. But even with Dion, as soon as one misstep is made on his part, they'll celebrate crucifying him just as they praise him now. Mark Jackson seemed to feel as though because he was the Warriors head coach, the team should also take on his personal beliefs and personal outlook on life with his Christianity and worldviews, openly allowing them to represent the team, causing the narrative that he forced his players to pray and attend church, where in Curry's case they'd be made spectacle and put in unwanted positions. He's also said to have publicly undermined the importance of his staff like assistant coach Brian Scalabrini, who he attempted to fire because of a disagreement, only for owners to demote Brian to the Warriors G League team instead. Some players felt he played weird head games, sacrificing insignificant players on the team as a way to motivate. I can go on and on about why it said people with the Warriors didn't like Mark Jackson, and they'll all boil down to the fact Mark Jackson just wasn't a good fit in liberal Golden State. When those narratives trickled down to NBA news, no one wanted that around their team. I'm sure Lacob and Goober's poor public reference also played a heavy role behind the scenes of not recommending Mark for further opportunities as well. Stun number two, defiant to the organization's wishes. To understand this reason why Mark was not only fired by the Warriors, but spurned in his opportunities to get another job, look no further than owner Joe Lacob himself, explaining why he let Mark go. He said for them, one of the biggest things was Mark didn't know how or didn't want to hire assistants the team thought were of championship caliber. Being the player-friendly coach Mark has been said to be, and again, one of the best pure point guards of his generation, I can see him taking a my guys are my guys approach, standing up for them when no one else would. The team and Mark had conversations about hiring better talent as assistants, and that's basically what Mark's response to owners was. Lacob said it was the determining factor in why they liked Steve Kerr when interviewed, because he made no quarrels about being flexible with his staff, and no matter his relationship with them, always vowed to keep the best only around and not his friends. Lacob said it was the one thing he wanted from Mark more than anything, was to sacrifice in that area for the betterment and solidarity of the team and organization. Not sure if Mark believed because he had turned the franchise around and at least did enough to be hired somewhere else for certain if the Warriors didn't keep him, but he defiantly allowed his personality and pride to blind him, not seeing what could have been done to keep his job. Stunt number three, allegations of homophobia. Lastly, looking past the reasons he was let go by the Warriors, he wasn't able to secure another job since, even with the foundation he gave to Golden State and Steve Kerr, going on to win four championships in the very next eight years. 
He turned that organization around, as dominant and defiant a personality he was, along with drafting two of the greatest shooters ever as well, of course. But Mark Jackson was the motivating factor and I believe had a great coaching career ahead of him. But when allegations of homophobia began to come out about Jackson, especially seeing as the Warriors president Rick Wells at the time was gay, it created a line in the sand. He's said to have made disparaging comments about players and staff while the head coach, which, true or not, is the worst allegations in today's climate, even more so in 2014 when homophobia was a hot key triggering word. He's had coaching opportunities fall through because of these allegations and says all the narratives surrounding him has been the cause. Teams like the Sacramento Kings and Lakers have expressed interest but even with a guy like LeBron's backing, he still can't find a coaching job and is why he will likely never coach another day in the NBA. All in all, it's sad not to see Mark given a chance to at least show if those allegations were true by being repeated a second time. He's one of my favorite commentators on basketball and is said to be one of the more liked player coaches with recommendations from Steph Curry and Andre Iguodala. Yet for these reasons, the NBA seems to hate the thought of giving him another opportunity. Salute to Mark Jackson, much, much respect, but for these reasons, his coaching career is being stunted. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth, and I'm out.